Good to us. I know. What would we do without you? Cole, you're amazing. I, I checked the time. I was like, they're going to be starting soon. Just a quick test. Yeah. Test, test. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me in the back? Can you hear in the back? Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Cole. He's amazing. Thanks, Cole. Everybody, thanks, Cole. Thanks, Cole. Thanks, Cole. I think we're good now. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, welcome to Spirits with Spirits, everybody. Thanks for making it out. So, I'm Jazz from Giving Up the Ghost podcast, and I'm Ashley from Winnipeg Paranormal Group. Uh, our, hey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so, our significant, our, our other partners couldn't make it out. Sharon's very shy, so she'll never come to these events. Yeah. Kelly had a family emergency at home, so. So, you're saddled with us for tonight, and uh, this is what we call Summer Ween. We wanted to try and do a dress up type thing because we love Halloween and everything creepy cool, so. I am the wish version of Sally from the Air for Christmas. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. It's all right. Yeah. Thank you. I get to be a broken fairy because my dogs ate my wings. <laughs> <laughs> dog ate my hair. Dog ate my wings. Anyway. So, yeah. So, hey, ladies. Come on in. Don't be shy. Come on in. Sit on down. Find a seat. Get cozy and make some friends. Make friends. Nobody's going to buy blood. All right. Okay. Sorry. The beer's okay. kicking in. <laughs> anyway, so every week we pick themes. The first week uh, we did month? Oh yeah, see the beer's kicking in and humidity and all that good stuff. So the first month in May, see I did get that right, May our first topic was haunted highways, which was a really, really cool subject. And we're hoping to do more of that on the podcast because we still keep getting the stories ever since we threw it out on Facebook. We, we keep getting haunted by new stories. So there's a little more of that. Last month, uh, June, right? Yeah. June, we uh, attempted to do rentals, haunted rentals, because that's a big thing. Like a lot of people could live in a haunted house for many, 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 many years and not know it's haunted. And then suddenly they, they move and hurt trees, wallpaper, and wrath opens up and things move and all that poltergeisty type uh, stuff happens and and then we're also talking about your garden variety haunted house stories as well uh, and this month july right <laughs> is shadow people ooh. can i hear ooh. first off does everybody believe in ghosts i was like opening with that one yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay has anybody experienced seeing ghosts or the like? Yeah, okay, or feeling. Okay, that's cool. Um, spirits. Or spirits, that's our energy, yes. right? You know, and if you don't, we're not going to ask you to leave or anything. That's okay. We just we'll, might judge you a little bit. We'll get a little judgy on that, yeah, for the people that don't believe. But like I, like I like to say, like I'm speaking with the same couple here on Friday at the St. James Museum Ghost Tour, uh, there are three types of people in the world. There are the ones that believe, there's the ones that don't believe, and then there's the other ones that want to believe but haven't seen or experienced anything to convince them otherwise. Right? Should we get into the story in this? Or? Yeah, sure. Let's jump into the story. What would you like? If you guys have a story that you want for open mic, you can come see me and I can get your name on the list. Okay, that's Did everybody fair. hear that? If you have a story that you'd like to tell tonight, if you weren't able to pre-register, you can come over to this lovely table, fill out a draw ballot for our prize as well, yep. and uh, get some candy. Candy is always a good bribe. We have a little white van, but we have a candy. <laughs> and uh, let Chelsea know you'd like to tell a story okay. tonight, and we'd love to hear from you guys. And we should also introduce Chelsea yeah. from Ravens and Books, because Woo! she's the one. Woo! She's the one that spearheaded this whole endeavor, and we'd like to thank her for her involvement in helping us out. Yes. Yes, thank you. Chelsea's awesome. Chelsea's amazing. Awesome. 
So yeah, so get the story. So that's how it's going to go. We're going to talk about shadow people. Get some liquid courage happening. Come tell your story at 8 o'clock. No judgment. We want people involved. And uh, free candy. There's candy and the booze. So whatever it is you want. Poison? The booze isn't free, though. Oh, sorry. No, no. no, 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 no free booze there. Just the candy. Let's, let's be very clear about that. So. Anyways, the beer is kicking in. All right. So... Um, shadow people, did I ask that? I said people believe in ghosts and stuff, yeah. right? Shadow people experiences, right? So basically shadow people are also known as dark shadows or shadow entities. And they're often described as shadowy figures that appear in the peripheral vision of individuals. They are frequently reported as being humanoid in shape, sometimes wearing a hat, and commonly referred to as the top hat man. So just to interject here, and I ran off the track quite a bit, choo-choo and all that good stuff. Um, if you've never listened to Giving Up the Ghost podcast, uh, again, one takes first and another parent on the podcast during the five and a half years, we've interviewed many, 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 many people that have had shadow man experiences or top hat man, which is something I've never heard of before. They don't have to go together. You can have a shadow man or you can have a top hat man. That That's is a shadow man. So. And that's a universal thing, because I've heard um, other podcasts and, and ghost shows down in the States, and Top Hat Man is a big thing. Yep. So, anyway, I just had to interject that. So, so basically, these figures are usually seen in fleeting moments and can disappear as quickly as they appear. So, the characteristics and descrip descriptions, uh, again, humanoid shape. Shadow people are often described as having vaguely human form, uh, though without discernible facial features or details dark and opaque, and they are characterized by their darkness and or, or opacity, appearing as silhouettes, uh, movement. Many people suggest that shadow people move quickly and can appear to glide or float. Uh, peripheral vision, sightings often occur in the peripheral vision, making it hard to get a clear view, I guess like the face, right? Like kind of blurry and all that good stuff. And then the top hat man, of course, a specific type of shadow person, the top hat man is distinguished by wearing a tall hat and sometimes a long coat. So this figure is often perceived as more sinister. Um, where and when do shadow people often appear? So basically, homes, of course, sightings often occur in people's homes, particularly in bedrooms and holidays. Uh, and again, as we get into some of these stories, it's always like long holidays. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but uh, basically, I'll stay away from the long holidays. Uh, abandoned buildings, they are frequently reported in abandoned or old buildings and places of high emotion, which makes a lot of sense because energy, right? Locations with a history of trauma or strong emotional energy, such as hospitals or battlefields. So um, I'm going to share the ghost love here and let Ashley read. We're, we're, between us, we have two hands because they didn't like stands this time around. Those went missing. So here we go. Okay. So, as with most ghost sightings, they are normally spotted at night, but, you know, if a place is haunted, it's haunted at four in the afternoon and four in the morning. They don't flock out. <laughs> Bunch of card. Um, a lot of people also see them during sleep paralysis, so um, it is a common sight in that. Um, so, possible explanations. Because, you know, we like our logical explanations. We need to know. Uh, so there could be psychological factors like sleep paralysis or paradelia. Um, so sleep paralysis is where you wake up and you can't move. Right? Any, anybody have experienced sleep paralysis? It's kind of creepy when it happens, right? Yeah. Um, and paradelia is um, our brains like to see patterns. Um, so it's kind of like matrixing where you see images that aren't actually there because our brain wants to see it. Uh, neurological explanations. Ooh. I don't even know how to say those words. <laughs> Basically hallucinations. <laughs> These hallucinations occur at the transition between wakefulness and sleep and can involve seeing shadowy figures. Like lucid dreaming, I've heard too. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you can also see them, or it can also be considered as a temporal lobe seizure. I guess that's scary. Know, that can be kind of scary. And then we get into the lovely paranormal theories, which, you know. Hello. That's where we want to go. That's right. 
<laughs> when we've got spirits or ghosts. So some people believe shadow people are spirits or ghosts, possibly of individuals who have died and remained earthbound. Uh, interdimensional beings. Okay, another theory suggests shadow people are beings from another dimension, briefly intersecting with our reality. Um, so that's actually a very common theme in paranor paranormal investigating, if you don't know that. Um, <laughs> there's so many different theories on parallel universes and how we can interact with them, which is some people's belief in what ghosts are. Mm -hmm. Like different dimensions. Yeah. yeah. Um, it could also be demons. We don't use that. We don't use the D words. Yeah. <laughs> not because it's scary, but because you don't it's like it. up for TV, right? Like yeah. that's how they get their ratings. That's how they yeah. get their viewers. They're really like I've been doing this for over ten years. I can honestly say I have never encountered one. I can say I've encountered negative energy, energy that wasn't happy we were there or happy that it was there, but it wasn't a demon. It just wasn't happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we also have omens and folklore. I like this. Ooh, I love love this. Omens. Shadow people are often associated with a sense of dread or fear. The presence is sometimes considered an omen of bad luck or misfortune. Um, they're considered an energy drain. So some reports suggest that encounters with shadow people leave individuals feeling drained or fatigued. That's pretty common with all types of ghosts. If you're interacting, they're going to use your energy. Mm -hmm. And negative energy, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they can also be seen as harbingers of death. Ooh. In some cultures, shadow figures are seen as harbingers of death appearing before a significant loss or tragedy. Mm -hmm. right. And then we also have the cultural perspectives. <clears throat> Western culture and Western culture, shadow people are often linked to ghost stories and paranormal investigations. And exactly like we said before, the Top Hat Man in particular is a well-known figure in ghost lore. Eastern cultural, notable, sorry, Eastern culture, in various Eastern cultures, shadow entities might be interpreted as spirits or jinn, supernatural beings with their own distinct lore and attributes. And then we also have indigenous beliefs. So some indigenous cultures have stories of shadow beings or dark figures often tied to spiritual beliefs about the afterlife and the spirit world. So basically the conclusion to all this is the, phen uh, the phenomenon of shadow people is a complex and multifaceted topic that spans psychologically, neurologically, folklore, and the paranormal. While many scientific explanations can account for settings, the cultural and personal impact of these encounters continues to intrigue and mystify people worldwide, whether viewed as figments of the mind or as spiritual entities, shadow people remain a potent symbol of the unknown and the unseen. So that just gives you some brief explanation if, if you've never heard or seen or experienced it yourself. Uh, just gives you an idea as to the whole outlay. Like, nobody really knows what they are, but, um, like, I, I, I firmly believe, I've had experiences with sleep paralysis, not for a few years now, but I did when I was younger. Um, I had maybe about 10 years, mm, 8 years ago, and it's usually like lucid dreaming, like when you're lucid sleeping and when you're just, take your, your sleep and you can't quite wake up like you're groggy and stuff and I thought I saw somebody in my house that looked like a shadow figure like and I would talk to it because I thought it was somebody in my family and it wasn't and then I just like kind of went I'm just going to go back to sleep down pretend I didn't see that and, <laughs> and then I woke up but I mean like there's the sleep paralysis aspect with shadow people um, uh, the one part that Ashley talked about with respect to um, interdimensional beings, like different, different, uh, you know, that word? Parallel universe. Yes, thank you, Mendel is very, uh, parallel universe. Um, I mean, I've heard really weird conspiracy theories, not that I buy into it, but a lot of different movie stuff that's pretty cool, that there's some people when they, exper or when they um, experiment with, um, what do you call, uh, remote viewing, which is something the CIA developed, and people can kind of get themselves in a trance-like state where they transport their energy somewhere else, and somebody else has seen that energy, 
and they report back that there was a shadow figure when that person showed up just hiding. So I mean, there's a whole bunch of weird stuff we don't know about. Um, shadow people could be like, just maybe bad, not bad spirits, but maybe spirits that are no longer have a strong energy and then we need to feed off energy is what I'm thinking, you know? Like, yeah, I mean, this is all, this whole field is all theory, right? There's yeah. nothing, there's no science that will ever prove what we do. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah, and basically spirits are a science that people, humans, have not figured out yet. Yep. That's what I say. So, um, we did throw the topic out to Facebook because I love Facebook, as uh, dramatic as Facebook is. <laughs> um, just throwing out some questions if anybody's had any experiences with shadow figures or if they've experienced it. So, here are some of the responses we got for some personal stories. Pablo said, I just see shadows move. Most of the time it's in my house. They seem to change shapes in the corner of my eyes or kind of wisp across hallways. There's that hallway again. Yeah. I hate long hallways. Um, another person, Jerry, had said that when they were, first when they were a kid they had seen a shadow figure and it was a plump lady in the upstairs hallway near my bedroom. Our house was close to 100 years old. And Jerry says, I used to call them peaky monsters. I kind of like that. Peaky monsters? Anyway. Uh, because you only caught a glimpse, which makes sense, right? Uh, she said, there was too many events to remember at the moment, uh, but as an adult at an evening committee meeting, a very fast, smallish band going past the doorway. He'd go back and forth, only two or three meetings a year. I'd sit on the other side of the room, so I wouldn't face the door eventually. And there's been other sightings too, she said. Uh, and then she also recovered, recalled, recovered, uh, called, recalled, uh, as a kid, I just hid under the covers. I told my fellow meeting members, but uh, they called me, told me, you know, Sorry, I guess she told me two different stories at the same time and I mixed them up. Um, at these committee meetings, she had told her family, did anybody park in like a tow zone? There's a tow truck. And it's driving away with a car, by the way. Oh shit. It looked like a black SUV. <laughs> From this street. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I just heard the noise and... I just saw the reflection in yeah. the window. Oh shit. Anyway, um, so yeah, so this Jerry had said that she'd see this person at the committee meetings, and then she would actually tell her her, her members, her meeting members, but they called and told her that uh, she was imagining things, uh, and then she also related that when she did see them as a kid, she would hide under the covers. The childhood home was in Winnipeg. She said my family was there since 1904. And then she says, I was married there in the house, and I lived in there until uh, 1973. At 20, she moved out. Lots of occurrences took place throughout the years. It seemed to stop when my parents had moved out in the 1990s, but other occurrences had followed me to Alberta. So, of course, I ask a lot of questions. I'm very inquisitive, so I said, maybe was it something that was attached to the belongings from the house? And she just said yes. So I think she already checked into that and she knew. So um, do you want to share it? Well, the next one, you can choose the next one. So this one is from Firebrand. Um, and they say, me and my brother were on a walk back home one night from getting smokes. And as we were walking down Arlington from Selkirk, I saw a tall black shadow move fast down the sidewalk to our left, then vanish near a back lane. I noticed my brother look in that direction and asked him, did you see that too? He was like, I'm not losing my mind. That thing was tall and fast, holy shit. I, I love the occurrences, like shadow people is one thing, but if you've ever heard ghost stories and you have more than one person that actually confirms, did you see that too? And then like, yeah, and you're in a group of people, I think that's amazing because not only does it prove you're not crazy, um, it's validation. Yeah. Uh, so then this story is from Devin. Out of the corners of my eye on the constant. Um, giving up the ghost remark that that would be exhausting. And Devin responded with, it is. I really need to talk about it. See, and that's why we kind of do what we do here. Like we're hoping in traces people come out, not just to share their experiences so other people understand, but just so it gives them a sense of relief 
break cathargic because a lot of times when people have these experiences and say they come from a, either a strict family or just very, um, how do you say, judgmental? <laughs> Well, family isn't judgmental. No, when you come from a family that's, say, maybe more religious and you're not supposed to believe that kind of stuff, or, oh, you're crazy, that doesn't happen. So it's kind of nice that we have a venue like this that people can actually see the truth and, and talk with other people that are open-minded about it, like-minded. Uh, so then I'll, I'll just stay this one thing and then I'll pass it on to you. Oh, so sure. the guest here um, didn't really give a story, but actually has another name for it. Um, and she calls it the Reaper. Like that, too. Eh? Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Elijah said, "Yes, with the shadow people, they used to freak me out, and until I learned methods to get rid of them, I just imagined an animal's voice could be a pet or when you hear outside all the time. Imagine the animal is yelling at at them to go, go away. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting." I mean, I read this earlier, but I'm thinking about it now, and I'm like, hmm. Different ways to manifest sure. your protections, right? And I think, too, like, it, it takes your attention off of it, right? Like, you're, 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 you're redirecting your energy, you know? Another, another person says, yes, I've seen shadow figures. Uh, the one I have, I call him the Black Smoky Man. He touched my face with his long, smoky fingers. Don't like that. No, no, thank you. No. It does. Right? Yeah. I'd like to get that close? No, thank you. Another person, Krista, says, yes, this happens to me often. And uh, we asked, in your current home or every home you lived in? And Krista said, pretty much every home and at work. Uh, there was lots of activity there. I swear I could write a book on all the paranormal, paranormal stuff that I've experienced. So, of course, we encourage that. We're like, yeah, or tell us to, you know. Uh, another person named, actually, I think hers goes on to the next page. For okay. Carolyn, you want to do that one? Sure. So, Carolyn, uh, she says she has twice in her own house. Uh, her house has weird stuff. She grew up it, grew up in it, and saw numerous things as a child between four and seven. Then it stopped for years. Then three years before her father passed in the house, again she saw a shadow person. Uh, her father used to see a woman frequently, which used to piss her mom off. <laughs> My father had all of his faculties. My twin brother has seen shadow people as well in the house a few years ago. Although it doesn't bother me, which is good because I bought the house. Uh, could the up the ghost asked, did you ever do a history search about the property? No, uh, I haven't. Folks bought it in 1968, was built in 1960. Oddly, my neighbor, the first time I ever met them, the wife asked me if my house was haunted. I asked why she said that, and her, her, I asked why. She said her daughter seen, has seen weird shadows in one of the windows when no one is home. Go figure. I also had a point that was totally stable, talking to someone in their room at the foot of the bed. I asked her who she was having a conversation with. She said, my mom, of course. I said, oh, where is she? She pointed to the foot of the bed and said, she's there, waiting for me. Well, did you know it? That person died about an hour afterwards. She was to go back home the next day as she had been treated. Another, and I think that's supposed to be patient, another patient spoke to her dad, dead husband as, at the foot of the bed. My father used to see a lady at the foot of his bed in our house I'm in now. So, I mean, that, that's very common that, mm -hmm. especially in hospitals or as people are um, getting ready to pass on, that they see their loved ones or, or spirits and energies around them.